Hey everyone, it's Patrick from Vicious Computers, and today let's talk about the new Stream Deck Plus and why I'm not personally super excited about it. And maybe by the time that we're done with this video, you might not be either, because I'm going to go over a couple of things I've been using for the last couple of years that are great alternatives that might give you more power for less money. So the item that I have on my desk that I've been using for the last two years instead of the Stream Deck, which is basically just a very small Stream Deck, touchscreen, and four knobs, is the Korg Nano Control 2. As you can see, it is $80 right now, and it has eight knobs, eight faders, and like 30 buttons on it. All it really is is a MIDI controller, and with the MIDI controller, if you're familiar, any of the pro editing software out there has MIDI inputs. So whether you're using Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere, you're using DaVinci Resolve, Instead of just setting hotkeys for your shortcut, you can also go and set yourself MIDI controls. So I've used this Korg Nano control to uh, split my videos, to do fade ins and fade outs, to do transitions, you name it. You can pretty much use it as like 30 different hotkeys, use the knobs and the faders to control levels and do things uh, such as controlling your timeline. So it's really neat stuff once you get in and start configuring it, but it's only as powerful as the software and Elgato that's where they've got everything going is they have a great universal software suite and the Stream Deck software is really good and now they have their microphone they have their lights and that's kind of where the new Stream Deck Plus comes in is because now you can start controlling your system audio controlling your microphone audio controlling your lights but that's only if you're heavily invested in their software and hardware and once you get stuck in that ecosystem you're stuck in that ecosystem as someone who's an IT professional and always been into gadgets, I tend to do a lot of research on what's the best price versus performance. So all the new lights in the studio slash office slash whatever this place is, I've been getting newer lights because let's take a quick look. The Elgato key light is $200 for one light. The exact light I got from newer when it was on sale for like $109. This light is bigger and more powerful and more accurate than the Elgato light. And it's app controlled. So when I grab my phone, I can control those lights, the little light I'm using to light my desk, the cob lights that are lighting up the wall behind me. They're all in one ecosystem. They're made for photography and videography. So they have some cool advantages because they can be run off the, uh, the Sony batteries. So they don't even have to have a power cord plugged into them. So they're good, not just for being connected to my desk in my studio, I can take them with me to do photo shoots. So they were cheaper and better than the Elgato lights. So if I had the Elgato lights, then I'd be a little bit more tempted to get the control through that ecosystem, but I didn't do that. And the reason, and then for the microphone, instead of getting the Elgato mic, I have the Shure SM7B, which is pretty much one of the standards for one of the better microphones you can use for this kind of work. So again, if you're going to, you're either going to downgrade your equipment to be in their ecosystem, or, you know, you're going to be stuck in their ecosystem and have to pay more money for stuff you can get cheaper. That's one of the reasons I hate being stuck in a specific ecosystem and I tend to try to go for the best for each. All right. Now, one of the great things I saw advertised on the YouTube videos coming out for the new stream deck is, Hey, I can control all my audio on my system. Now let's, uh, let's turn on the webcam feed. I do have the Elgato Stream Deck XL. I think it's an amazing device. I'm happy that it has so many buttons. Here is the Nano Control 2. The first program I'm going to show you is called MIDI Mixer. It is a free program. So www.midi-mixer.com. Let's open that up. So MIDI Mixer gives you the ability to do application specific volume controls for any of the faders and knobs. And you can also go in here and set the buttons to do your media controls. You can go further than that. You can say, uh, make them run a file so you can have it launch an application. And of course, if you're like me and you can write your own applications, that means you can make it do anything. And then you can also do key combinations. So you can set hotkeys and have any of those buttons on the nano control become a hotkey, which means of course, then through OBS or any other program, you can have it do what you want. So just simply having this open, now my faders control everything. So I have this knob over here. You'll see it controls my major line out. So that's an audio device. If I go to my mixer control over here, this controls Firefox. And the next one controls Chrome. 
And I also have it set to the faders as well. So I can use the faders or the knobs. So I've been using that lately to control my audio because instead of having to reach for my amplifier and adjusting volume on the amplifier, I just quickly grab these and just turn them up or down as needed. So that's been working really well for me to get that application control that they're now giving you through the uh, link. I forgot what it's called, some kind of link software on the Elgato side. It's already built into Windows and having a MIDI controller means you have easy access to it. Underneath of my desk, I have, I think, a 72 key keyboard and it has a drum pad, faders, knobs, and then of course the 72 keyboard keys. That's all MIDI input too. So all of this would work with my keyboard too. For a while, I had my keyboard set up as like the master hotkey center with like 72 different hotkeys. I even thought about printing labels to put them all on there. Overkill, but fun stuff you can do. The next one, uh, before I started using MIDI mixer to control the system audio, I used to use my actual mixer a lot more. So I have the, the Behringer X18, which is a digital mixer. I got rid of my analog mixers a long time ago. This is one of the best purchases I've ever made. It gives you so much control and being able to set different profiles and load them is so much easier than dealing with swapping cables out on an analog mixer. It's easy enough to pull up the software here on my computer and make changes or uh, use the phone app or iPad app or whatever you'd like to use. But you can again use the Korg Nano Control to control the mixer. This was good when I was playing my bass guitar and I didn't want to like bend over and get on my computer screen. I could just reach for the little uh, Nano Control and adjust levels from there. That piece of software is called OSI MIDI Stage. So that would be www.osimidi.com. This is not a free software. This one actually is a paid software. But when I was researching ways to control my digital mixer from my MIDI controller, instead of having to buy a dedicated hardware from Behringer, this let me use any MIDI device to control it. So let's close the uh, MIDI mixer real quick and let's open up OSI MIDI. And the license is installed on my old computer, not the new one. So. I'm just in trial mode right now. So it picks up my, my mixer, which is on my network. I'll load the configuration I created for my nano control and start it. And now I have control of my mixer through here. So if I want to grab the SM58 slider, and there you go, controlling my digital mixer from here. And I have my, my knobs at the top. They are the, the gain on the preamps. And then I have the buttons all doing something too. So like if I want to press S, that will solo a channel. Solo a channel, I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> M mutes a channel. And then R highlights, so that way I know which channel my slider and uh, knob control. So really cool, powerful software. Um, that one is not free, but for the cost of the software plus this, it was still cheaper than buying the Behringer actual controller for the X18. The next piece of software I wanted to go over, and this one I used a long time ago, is MIDI to key. So this one takes any MIDI device and lets you basically turn it into keyboard shortcuts. So you can take your keyboard, uh, like digital keyboard, you can take the mixer like this, and you can pretty much create any hotkey you want out of your MIDI device. And this is a good way to integrate a MIDI device into a program that does not natively support MIDI input. So say we're going back to the Adobe Premiere, it supports MIDI input and you can use it directly. But if you're saying using Windows uh, Media Editor, it probably doesn't. And you can just use your MIDI device, set hotkeys with this free program, and then activate those buttons by pressing them to do those hotkey combinations. So between the fact that I find myself buying cheaper hardware to use with its own ecosystem, than the dedicated Elgato stuff. And that's the case with my lights. That's the case with my microphone. Although this microphone is more expensive than the Elgato one, I think. And then having the Stream Deck XL for all my Stream Deck needs, just adding a nice little MIDI controller like this for less than half the price, giving me more knobs, more faders, more buttons, and more control made more sense to me. And that's the reason I'm not super excited about the new Stream Deck Plus. And I think, have you 
the knowledge of these alternatives, you might look into them a little bit more and find yourself happier with your purchase and decision. Or if you have some stuff laying around already that you didn't know you could utilize like this, this video now gave you the knowledge of how to start utilizing it. Last thing to mention is the actual Korg MIDI control app. The, the actual application itself gives you a lot of flexibility. So if we go into the nano control, you can set everything in here. It's like, do you want these to be MIDI notes? Do you want these to be uh, control channels? Do you want them to be transport layers? Like, so you can do a lot of uh, customization right from just the Korg software, right from there, before you even get into some of those free third-party apps to add those extra features. So there's pretty much been nothing that I have not been able to control with the nano control. And so this would just be less for me and it would take up a little bit more desk real estate in my case because I don't really have a place to I wouldn't want to put it in front of my existing stream deck um, because it would block it this is nice and flat and lays right in front of it and I don't have a place to put it next to it because then it would block either where my mouse goes or where my USB equipment goes so this layout's working really well for me so other than that uh, if you have any questions be, be sure to ask those down in the comment section I'll answer those for you and everybody else Links to products that I've described today will be down in the description and you can click on those affiliate links and to help support the channel. I've been buying a bunch of crap lately and of course, over time I'm exhausting my fun funds. So uh, a little bit of income could help bring new products onto the channel for review. And uh, so I just wanna say I'm back, back surgery went well. This is Patrick from Vicious Computers and I'll see you next time.